What up, y'all? It's the homie Dame, and this is the homie talks. Yep, that's the name I'm going with. This is the segment on my channel where I just talk about random miscellaneous topics relating to otaku culture, or anime, and manga, basically whatever's on my mind. And what's on my mind right now is Demon Slayer. So if y'all have been keeping up with the news, apparently the Prime Minister of Japan uh, said that he's a huge fan of Demon Slayer and that he promised to boost the income for people working in the anime and manga industry. Uh, which, when he says that, I hope he means like animators too, because that motherfuckers really need to get paid. Listen y'all, I don't know nothing about Fumio Kushida. I know he literally became Prime Minister like just recently um but uh, i'm i'm big into politics and world events so i vaguely remember him when he was foreign minister uh, a few years ago kind of being like a big voice in um uh, the the debates with denuclearization with north korea but that's it i don't know nothing i don't know a lot and i definitely don't know shit about his anime tastes but apparently he's a big demon slayer fan and I guess his favorite character is Akaza. You know, this reminds me of like Hillary Clinton talking about Pokemon go to the polls. Like, relax, you're doing a lot. But what do I know? Maybe Fumio Kushida has read the whole Demon Slayer manga and he has a Kanroji body pillow and little Inosuke figurines on his desk. Or maybe he just watched the popular hit movie that was in theaters recently that's breaking Japanese box office records and he picked Akaza as his favorite character because that's who he remembers from the movie. Who knows? I don't know the guy. I mean, at the end of the day, it don't really matter because what's important is if he'll actually do that part where he said um, he was going to boost the income of people in the anime and manga industry. That would be dope if that actually got put into place. I know Japan has recently been going through some things with the industry. Uh, there's the whole thing with MAPPA overworking uh, its employees. Uh, there was that whole attempt at censoring the manga industry by the president of Katakawa. Uh, all kinds of stuff. So I really like seeing that Japan is looking to invest in the industry because it really is a benefit to the country, in my opinion, you know because anime and manga is probably one of Japan's biggest cultural exports and you know how it's how it exerts that um, I guess soft cultural influence on the world stage so I don't know yeah I guess it makes sense to try and help the industry thrive as much as possible and that includes paying people livable wages but if I have to be you know a cynical realist here Japanese politicians are probably no different from politicians in any other country so who knows how much their promises are really worth right but it is it is exciting to think that in the future happier more well-paid animators and artists could potentially be putting out higher quality anime and manga and I mean that's a good thing yeah damn man I don't know who would have thought Demon Slayer would save anime huh it really is insane what a cultural phenomenon it's become, not only in Japan, but worldwide. Because I, I really couldn't even tell you how it all came about. Because I remember before the anime, when the manga was still being published and people were uh, praising it as the this dark horse shown in manga. It's so underrated and, and unknown. Only real chads read Demon Slayer. Now it's like the most popular thing ever. And people are calling it uh, overhyped, uh, fucking D-Mid Slayer and, you know, all that. So I'm really curious about where season two is going to go because it's going to be airing soon and it's got some high expectations with how popular the franchise is now and how much acclaim the first season got and uh, the success and critical reception of the movie it's like damn season two really got a lot to live up to and it's also going to be adapting in my opinion one of the better arcs of the manga which is you know the red light district arc or the entertainment district arc if you're lame i haven't watched a single trailer because y'all know i don't be watching trailers for shit but i've seen like promotional images and i think it's safe to assume that the anime will have a similar quality of animation to season one uh, i know they're not starting out with the entertainment district arc they're uh, they're doing like I think like a recap of the Mugen Train arc, which I don't know if they'll just break the movie into episodes or whatever. But uh, I'm wondering if that'll you know piss off some people who aren't aware that they're doing a recap and they watch the first episode of the of the season expecting some new shit, like. <laughs> Cause I, I don't know, the actual season 2 arc isn't even starting to like December, right? Though, I don't know, I, I can't really imagine that anyone would watch season 2 without watching the Mugen Train movie first. Like, even if you're just a casual fan of the franchise, the Mugen Train movie was fucking huge and it was everywhere. You know, Funimation was promoting it so hard, uh, it made a boatload of money at the box office. You'd have to at least have heard of it, so... I, I don't know. I think it's interesting that they feel they need to recap the movie. I guess it's for people who think that the movie is non-canon. Like how a lot of anime movies don't have, you know, anything to do with the real plot. It's just like a side story, non-canon type thing. Maybe they want to put those episodes in there to be like, yeah, Mugen Train actually happened. It's 
got really a lot of really important plot points in it, so you gotta watch it. I don't know. What do y'all think about Demon Slayer, man? I've said it before on this channel that I like it well enough. Uh, I read the manga and it was pretty good and watched the anime, it was pretty good. I saw the movie on this channel and it was pretty good. Uh, but I'm not that invested in the franchise. I mean, if I ever feel the urge to watch something with demons and uh, swords, I'd probably just watch Dororo instead. Uh, I don't know. Let's see. What else can I talk about this episode? Uh, oh, what shows are you excited to see this fall season? I guess besides Demon Slayer. I think the ones I'm probably the most excited for are uh, probably like Mushoku Tensei's second core. I really like the first core. I didn't like it at first. I was debating like, should I record a commentary for this? And I think I said I even would in a few videos before. Uh, but I watched like an episode or two just to check it out and I was like, eh, I don't really like it But it's not really bad enough for it to be funny for me to make fun of So let me just not do the commentary and just watch it But after seeing the whole thing on my own time, I was like Yeah I get why everyone considers this to be like a masterpiece isekai. I'm also excited for, uh, fuck, uh, what else is coming up? Uh, Komi-san, you know, here's, the, okay, here's the thing. I'm really excited for the Komi-san anime, but I actually don't like the manga. So if you don't know, it follows like the traditional rom-com setup of, uh, it's a boy and girl who like each other, but there's like something quirky about it. It's got its little quirk. Oh, she's a rental girlfriend. Oh, she's actually a bully. Uh, 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 and here it's, oh, she has a communication disorder and then besides that one quirky thing it it plays out like a, a normal will they won't they type of rom-com now the thing is I don't the, the thing I don't like about Komi-san is that its supporting cast is not as strong as some of these other rom-coms which I don't know I think is really important because like I said most of these stories are standard like boy girl will they won't they so what makes it uh, what makes them fun are the characters around them so if you have like a lackluster supporting cast uh, you you just have the two main leads and yeah one of them may have that cute quirk or whatever but it can get old pretty quick now that being said why am I excited for the anime because one it looks beautiful like the art style looks great again um, I haven't seen any trailers but from promotional images I can see it's uh, very faithful to some of the uh, many Komi-san faces from the manga. I'd say the other reason I'm excited is because more uh, more likely than not, they'll be adapting the early manga chapters, which were some of the most enjoyable for me personally. So I'll get to enjoy some prime Komi-san content before it gets into the territory that uh, the manga had where it's like, okay, this is getting kind of old now. Uh, let's see what other shows uh oh uh miracle chan looks like uh miracle i forgot i don't even know how to pronounce it miracle chan looks like it's gonna be good uh, i'm a big fan of that manga it looks like they captured the 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 creepy horror art style aesthetic really well um let's see 86 second core looks pretty good uh, I still haven't finished the first core though, so I gotta catch up on that. Um, what else is coming out? That one annoying senpai show is coming out. I'll probably watch that. I don't know, y'all. There's there's a lot of good shows this season. Let me know what y'all are looking forward to. Uh, once we get a couple weeks into the season, I'll drop that, you know, uh, musician reacts to fall 2021 anime openings. The one I usually do, right? Uh, but yeah, that's that's all I really want to talk about this week. So I'll see y'all next Monday where I talk about some other mundane topic. Uh, in the meantime, like and subscribe and look out for uh, the Tokyo Avengers Part 2 commentary, the second core commentary, which will hopefully come out by the end of this week. Um, hopefully. But all right, that's the video. Peace.